saying we have to fix our perception about these types of things instead of uh, uh, stay, staying solely focused on them. You see. So let's talk about the Amazon rainforest. There has been over 74,000 fires in the Amazon since the start of 2019, since January of 2019. 74,000 fires. Think about that. That's 20% of our world's oxygen just systematically being destroyed. And what is it? It's uh, President Jair Bolsonaro who, 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 who has greenlit the whole thing. Now, if you guys go to the page, I actually posted about how they were spraying pesticides to kill bees in the Amazon around the same time frame that these fires took place. Why is that? Because the same thing happened in California whenever they had their fires as well. There was a lot of spray of chemicals of unknown carcinogens in the area and then prior to, and then, and then right after it, boom. It's like with the Ventura County fire, there were all kinds of uh, 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 chemtrails prior to, and then out of nowhere, this raging fire, this raging, this raging inferno took over uh, California. It seemed like the whole state was burning. Same thing's going on in the Amazon uh, and, and in South America and in Africa as well. The entire world is being burned and I don't know what for. Part of me clearly thinks that it's being done intentionally. Um, like even, even today, Tuesday, I think it's the 26th. Yeah, Tuesday the 26th, August 26th, 2019. Uh, President Jair Bolsonaro, before I came onto the air, he was like, I'm going to reject the G7 uh, $20 million or 20, I think, it, I think it's 20 million. The president of Brazil is going to reject the money that uh, the, 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 the G7 countries were going to give to them to stop the fire. All because he said he wanted uh, French President Emmanuel Macron to retract the insults that he gave towards uh, President Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. And so essentially he's saying, I'm not going to accept all of this aid to stop these fires because I want to be petty and dealing with superficial things. Now, this is all political theater. This is nonsense. This is craziness if you ask me. Cle cle clearly there's a level of collusion and cooperation amongst the elites that we don't understand. And they have to do this whole dance on the political world stage to show us these types of things. Maybe it's to raise the amount of money that they'll get. Maybe it's actually uh, uh, make, make it a global issue. I don't know. But the ignorance of literally denying aid for something that affects us all is very, very dangerous. Now, take a step back from that. What is uh, the environmental angle will be used to push the, world, the, 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 the new world order? It will be used to push the one world religion, which is Gaia worship, you see. Uh, earlier, literally yesterday, I talked about how the age of human existence is coming to an end and that robots and cyborgs will recreate the earth. The environment and technology, environmentalism and technology, the green agenda, this is what's going to be pushed for the new world order and for the, for the one world religion, you see. And the Amazon rainforest burning is the start of that. It's, it, it, it's dangerous, really. Like, I don't, I'll be speaking more about this on this week's podcast episode whenever more information comes out. But you already have people like Leonardo DiCaprio building a fund uh, to, 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 to help combat the fires that are there. You see, so there you go again. I guess because I see all kinds of different things and different factors with just one issue, I know that it can't just be what, what we're perceiving it to be. 74,000 fires don't just act accidentally happen. You see what I'm saying? You don't just accidentally have 74,000 fires. There's, there's, there's people being cleared to do these types of things. And what is the ultimate goal? We will find out. I talked about it uh, almost two weeks ago, how many environmentalists are being killed every single week, but the darling delight of the European Union, uh, Greta Thunberg, she can just take this million dollar yacht from Europe to America to come chastise Americans about our, our behavior, but she doesn't get killed. And I'm not saying that she should get killed. I'm trying to say, you have to look at how they're creating and, 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 and curating a narrative to push a certain thing. You see, uh, again, no one's caring about what's going on in Flint. Uh, no one's talking about our failing infrastructure. No one's talking about uh, uh, all these other environmental issues. They have to have a certain set of ones to essentially just build funds. That's the best way I can say it. These people are trying to destroy the planet, and I talked about this uh, more so in our most previous episode when I was in the Building the Matrix segment, the part three. 
I talked about how the, the intention is to destroy the exterior world so that they have us voluntarily upload ourselves to the matrix that you see them trying to build. They, they, they want to create it to, they want to create a world to where it feels hopeless, to where it seems like it's, there's, to where there's nothing here for us. You see, uh, <laughs> and if you ask me, I feel like that's really short shot, really short sighted. Think about how long the earth has been here and think about how long you think the earth has been here. It's been there twice as long. So for us to have this conceited, short viewed understanding of like timelines is very, very silly. Uh, but like I said, I'll speak more about that whenever uh, more information comes out on our, on, on our uh, podcast episode. Moving on to the next topic, the elites creating fake prophecy to push hopelessness and how that ties into the Illuminati, Satanism, CERN, and so much more. Whoever, I think, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whoever asked that question, but whoever did, you guys, are, you're keyed in. Like my keyblade over here, you're keyed in. Um, I really think that people need to understand because prophecy is happening on so many levels and because people don't understand prophecy, they don't understand religion, they don't understand spirituality, they, don't, they have no discernment, they don't, they don't get these things. Give me one second, gang. Uh, uh, grab these documents real quick. I forgot to close a window. Forgot to close a window. I kept hearing my neighbor's chicken. Um, <laughs> messing with my messing with my focus kept making me think maybe I should go check on my chickens. <laughs> no, that's not my chickens. Um, but yeah, back to back to key. The elites creating fake prophecy to push hopelessness. Why is that important? And how does that tie into what we're going to be talking about later on in the transmission? People don't understand that the people we're dealing with the same people that killed Jesus Christ. We're dealing with the same people who are just the Roman emperors. We're dealing with the Caesars. We're dealing with, we really are dealing with like an ancient evil. And I don't think people understand like the calculated, sophisticated level of all of, of, of what's going on there. When they're, when they're, and I've talked about this all the time when this question comes up, they're trying to trigger prophecy. You know, that's, that's why they have to tear down so many bastions of society so that certain things can unfold. You know, and, and it talks about this in the Bible. That's why I'm trying to do more, more, more prophetic studies and more biblical studies to really understand prophecy a little bit better. That's why they have to create the conditions for certain things to go through. Uh, and I think everybody over the past few years have, have, have radically noticed the shift in, in, in the human psyche. It's as if somebody flipped a switch and everything that was once good is now considered bad. And everything that was considered bad is now good. I mean, you have Satanists pushing for up till birth and then after birth abortions and then Beto O'Rourke's like, hey, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm super down for that. Boom, what's going on? I am Z Free, Zach Freeman, my man. Uh, I miss you, bro. Powerful dude. Um, we're talking about fake prophecy and how it's being used to push hopelessness. When I'm getting up here trying to remind you guys not only of your divinity, the time frames that we're in and what you have at your disposal, is to push hope, is to remind you of what's going on, to, 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 to fight whatever that transmission is, whatever that energy is, whatever that spirit is that, that disorients, confuses, and just depreciates people. People think that there is no hope because they really weren't taught these things. I was listening to, um, I was listening to this, this I think I was, I was listening to Francis Chan and a few other people that were really laying down they were sermons. I'm going to just shoot you straight. They were sermons and they were telling me like what it was, you know, and they were talking about how here in America, we don't think we're rich, but the rest of the world lives on $2 a day. We're, we're, we're like, we're so bold. We we're literally so comfortable. We can't see how we are the ones that need God the most. You know, we try to buy all these things that, to fill this hole inside of us. We don't realize like how destitute we really are. Uh, the hopelessness that people have in them, they don't recognize it. They literally don't know how to communicate with themselves. And I think that's a very, very real thing. Um, we had somebody comment saying, hey, you're losing a lot of weight. Fantastic, thank you. You're physically seeing what is mentally and spiritually developing in my life. 
as I become more and more sure of everything that's going on and who I and who I who I have to be in regards to all this, I'm learning to communicate with myself a lot deeper. I have hope because I realize that what what these cocksuckers are telling me is a lie. You're not gonna get me, bro. But because people don't have that level of discernment and, conf and, and, and confidence in themselves, they don't get that. You see, the hopelessness that's being pushed, it's, it's, it is the vaccines, it is the GMOs, it is the chemtrails, it is the Donald Trumps, it is the, uh, 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 the Popeyes versus Chick-fil-A, you know, it's the nonsense, it's, it's, it is the Amazon burning. You see, it's all this stuff to depreciate uh, that sense in you to understand the divine. And I think that's why I look at thing and everything in such an informational, knowledge-based, and almost spiritual way. I was talking about uh, before, beforehand, you know, about the Amazon rainforest and how that's the that's the goal is to destroy the exterior world. So you have all kinds of people that are pushing this environmental agenda, uh, uh, the eco extremists, as I like to call it. And, and you have people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and all these other people telling you that the world's going to end in 2030 and blah 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 and, and, and all of this. It's fear. It's fear. fear. Fear, 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 fear. It's the new war. You see, people didn't want the idea of bullets being shot at them. They were scared of that. But now they had to take it a step even further because somehow we've been desensitized to that level of violence. They had to go a step further. They're pushing this post-apocalyptic nonsense. That's why you see it on the television. That's why you see it in the movies. That's why you hear it on the music. That's why you hear it everywhere. Because it's literally designed to depreciate you, to wither away your hope. That's why a lot of times when you guys listen to the podcast, I don't use music. Boom, right there. Optimistic Deer just called it. Psychological warfare. That's the fake prophecy. People don't understand that the <laughs> people don't understand that these occultists and these Luciferians, right? These Satanists, they know the Bible sometimes better than you guys. And when they're doing everything they're doing, they're intentionally trying to uh, get a response from you. This is what I mean by them trying to trigger prophecy to push this hopelessness. That's why they feel like they can rule right now. That's why they have this, 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 this certain level of arrogance about them because they're of their father, the devil. And in, in that sermon I was listening to, because I listened to a few, I almost cried because I was like that fired up from it. I'm not gonna lie. My like spirit was on fire, but it talked too. that's, that's, and that's why it happened just like that. And people can feel the tension. That's why when the devil fell, he, he got filled with fury because he knows his time is short. And that's why they're doing everything they can to just unleash this level of evil because evil cannot contend. It can't stay in the light. It has to, it has to manifest in the dark. And that's why I'm telling you, they had to create the conditions appropriate to trigger prophecy, to push this hopelessness. If you like, I'm telling you, this is like, this is why they had to remove, this is why they remove uh, Christianity and religion and other things from the schools because that acted as like a level, a hedge of protection to, to, to secure the times. I think people in the Christian community call them intercessors and prayer intercessors, people that literally understand the times and try to fight against them. We don't have enough people within our generation that understand the times and are trying to fight against it. So we are gradually slipping into these times of hopelessness. And people like myself are very rare. I, you, hey, in the comments right now, you guys let me know who I can go listen to that sounds like me and gets what's going on. Like legit, who, who, who genuinely cares about you, your life, what we're doing, our generation, our kids, our time, and so much more. You let me know in the comments who I can follow. Because outside of, I don't follow you. I don't mean that like in a rude way. I don't follow people. I don't. A lot of people are lost uh, and it's scary. It is scary. And you won't find yourself scrolling through Instagram. You won't find yourself trying to take pictures for Snapchat. You won't find yourself arguing on Instagram. So that's what, that's what I mean by them trying to push and trigger this fake prophecy to push hopelessness. You see, um, and another level of it too, if you want my, like, my honest truth, is part of me thinks that it's all like with the reverse psychology, the reverse psychology, psychological warfare that's going on with the mainstream media, Donald Trump, and so much more, they're trying to get us. They're trying to trick us into doing what they want. It's it's so, it is so sophisticated. That's why I know that it is literally only the works of the devil that could do things like this. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so to talk about the Illuminati, Satanism, and Hollywood, and how that all pertains to fake prophecy and pushing this hopelessness. 
people don't think that, uh, like, <laughs> I laugh whenever people don't think the Illuminati is real, but they have a Facebook or they have a Twitter. Aware of that much more that, that they can do to us, you see. Uh, this is why I tell you guys all the time, stay vigilant. That's all I can keep telling you. Don't, don't get caught slipping. <laughs> um, Satanism in Hollywood. Moving on to the next topic. Satanism in Hollywood and how that ties into fake prophecy to push hopelessness. When these degenerate scumbags, when these uh, these people in Hollywood, these these actors, they just had the VMA, they just had the VMA awards, right? Got all these weirdos up there in Hollywood dressing like as strange as they can. When they're making these post-apocalyptic movies, when they're doing all this stuff, when they're putting this essence and this energy out there, they're trying to, again, push fake prophecy to so you understand uh, hopelessness, so you embody it, so you don't want to create anything in the future. You see, uh, I remember a few years ago, might have been like a year or two ago, I had some people in Hollywood that were contacting me and we were talking and he was like, EJ, I just want to let you know, bud, like what you're saying about the Hollywood stuff, it's very real. I've been in a few productions around here. And let me tell you, I had to find a whole new group of people to start working with because when we would do anything that was occult or mystic or even religious, it, it, it didn't have that same feel. Like we, it, it would be put out in a certain way, but the sets, they would have a completely different energy about them. And it almost felt dark, even whenever we were doing something light. And so the, uh, the guy and the girl, they ended up telling me like, because there's two different, two different situations, two different people who are experiencing uh, satanic energy out there in Hollywood saying they have to find essentially like conscious light workers and Christian uh, organizations to work with to, to, so that they can do their art because they understand that like the Satanism in Hollywood is, 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 it's an epidemic. You think this pedophilia is bad. Look at, look at the evil that is going on there in Hollywood. That's what's being used to push, to push the hopelessness. I mean, you could, I th again, I think inherently people already understand that Hollywood is probably one of uh, America's most satanic monument. <laughs> I think that's the easiest way to say it. Like, say, like, somebody just said right there, the church uh, would be perfect to manipulate. Yeah, it is. The new church is Hollywood. Actually, the old church is Hollywood. And they're coming up with a whole new one where the colleges are the churches and these professors are the priests uh, and where, where students are the acolytes you know, and the, and, and the funders behind these whole institutions, like those, those are the real gods, but that's a different discussion for a different time. Staying on Satanism in Hollywood and how it's being used to, to, to create fake prophecy to push hopelessness. You know, if, if you were to watch anything in Hollywood, it wouldn't remind you of your divinity. This is why they're so like frustrated with, with conscious people on the internet, conscious people on YouTube, conscious people in general, because we see the devil and the wickedness and the, and the evil these people are pushing and we're legitimately having to create something to combat that, but that's not what they want. They want to continue to push this hopelessness. That's why you can't type in, that's why they're removing the word Christian, that's why they're removing the cross, the Bible, and so much more, because they don't want you to have hope. You see, they, 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 you have got to just be a degenerate. That's what they want you to be. The Satanism, it truly is like an epidemic. And in its most current, uh, in its most current mutation, it is relative, relatively new. And I that's why people feel lost is because I'm sure all you guys do is listen to trap music and you can't wait for Game of Thrones. You don't understand how they're trying to ensnare you. That's why it's called entertainment. You could like out here, <laughs> I'm in New Mexico. It's called the land of en the land of enchantment. We call it the land of entrapment. You come here on vacation and you leave on probation. That's how this works. If they, if they keep you ensnared, you're trapped. But if you don't understand that you you hold all the cards that you have the power. Remove these people from your life. Remove these things from your life. Do not let them have a foothold. Otherwise, they will. Otherwise, they will try to control. You see. I mean, let me move on. I need to do like a whole separate thing on like the Illuminati and Satanism because one of the gifts that I've been given, and, and a lot of the revelations I've been given doing this type of work, is I understand evil in such a crazy way that it like trips me out. Um. And I, like, <laughs> I told you guys before at the start of the show, I thought like I was a bad dude. I thought I was like violent and gnarly and all this other stuff. No, 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 no. 
I've learned a whole new strength and discipline doing this. And that's what I'm saying. I understand evil in a completely different way. And it, is, it truly is a mystery. And that's why so many people are, are, are deceived by it. Because they don't recognize it. I just showed you guys my keyblade, right? And if you didn't, you will, I wish you guys could see it. It's, 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 it's sexy. But if people don't understand how to fight back the darkness, they will become slave to it. That's the simplest thing to say. And whenever I talk to you guys about this, I'm coming from the, 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 the point of view of like, I've already, I've, I've already entertained the darkness to a degree and realized I didn't want that. I started seeking after like, I started seeking after light and everything you guys see comes from that. You see. So I'm going to start talking about CERN. And if I can, I'll try to interweave uh, missing people in national parks and stuff like that and how that ties into the fake prophecy to push hopelessness. Uh, because I am talking about technocratic Satanists uh, and scientific occultists, you see, you have to understand that we're now dealing with the realms of techno sorcery. It's the easiest way for me to uh, define it. Techno sorcery, arcana machina, you see, uh, arcane machines, and how it's being used to, to, how it legitimately is being used to pull in otherworldly energy. It's the simplest thing to say. Uh, go look at Jordy Rose, uh, the D-Wave quantum computers. He himself says that that's what we're doing. We're getting these, we're getting these quantum computers. We're reaching into other dimensions. We're pulling out their, their information. We're running calculations in their dimensions and then we're bringing that information back and we're actuating that dimensional equation here. And it doesn't make sense because it's, it's not, it's not here. And how does that tie into the fake prophecy to push hopelessness? I think it was like 2015, but I'm sure somebody will fact check me, but they had the Gothard Tunnel Ritual. Uh, I, forget, I forget which part of the European Union it was, but they had the Gothard Tunnel Ritual basically to unveil a whole new segment of CERN. And if you guys go look at the Gothard Tunnel Ritual, it's a legitimate ritual. That's the easiest way to say it. You have people dressed up, you have people chanting. You have in, uh, incantations, you have smoke, you have it all. It's a ritual. If you really want to see like a, what a modern day ritual is, go go look it up. The Gothard Tunnel Ritual. It's right there. All in your face, all out there in the open. That's how it has to happen. If they can pull this stuff out in the open and nobody... Switzerland? Right on. Thank you, uh, Namili29. Namili Precisely. Boom. 2015 in Switzerland. Uh, there was the Gothard Tunnel Ritual. If you guys want to know more about that, go look it up on YouTube. It's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. But the whole idea behind that ritual was them ushering in another essence, ushering in the, de the demonia, ushering in these creatures, you see. Because as I keep trying to reiterate to you guys, the whole goal is to create an environment in which it's normal to them, you see. I was at this party this past week, uh, <laughs> and I had my bae with me. You know, she saw some stuff she didn't like, and she says, you know, after we come home and we're talking, you know, she's all, she's all, I don't know how, but we started talking about chaos and peace and balance and bliss and stuff like that. And she's just like, I don't know what she said, but she's like, yo, these, these guys are so chaotic. And I'm like, I know, right? I love it. I love it <laughs> because that's, I, I, I used to love the chaos. I used to model myself after the Joker because I love chaos. That's the natural order of things. But as I'm getting older, it's it's a different perspective. Uh, but we were talking about how people who don't know what peace is, they will bring that chaos around them everywhere they go. You see, the chaos that is inside of them, they will make the external match the internal. You, know, you can go look at this with people that are doing this whole transgender thing. It's called body dysmorphia. It's a real thing. And so when we're talking about people that are chaotic and, 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 and have this hurricane of, uh, of emotion that they don't understand they are they're victim to that you see and so how does this tie into CERN the fake prophecy and the push and hopelessness when these people are pulling out these other entities and making making our world theirs they are trying to make make they're essentially trying to make the external match the internal that's why you don't hear words like divinity that's why you don't hear like really really positive things anymore is because of the world that these people are trying to create. 
and I've, I've spoken about this uh, in a little bit of a more in-depth way with CERN, but if you guys want a trippy rabbit hole to go down, look at every single time CERN is powered up, look at how many environmental disasters and geological changes take place. That'll set you down a pretty, pretty crazy rabbit hole. You will, you will literally start seeing essentially interdimensional energetic exchanges and how it has effects here. What I'm trying to say is that when these people fire this thing up because they're smashing these, these particles and doing all this stuff, that's so much immense energy here that it causes like it causes a, a rift. Like back in like the 40s and the 50s because we were setting off nukes and doing all this other crazy stuff, uh, space brothers or aliens or whatever you want to call them, they came in, they said, you guys need to stop this because you're creating ripples in the space time frame. So I'm not going to speak any more about that, but if you guys want to know more, definitely go look at the Gather Tunnel Ritual, CERN, and some of the other environmental disasters and unnatural geological changes that have taken place every time they fired it up. Crazy.